Hello and welcome to a new video on cryptography for everybody. In this video, we will have a look at the Bacon cipher, which was invented by Francis Bacon. And despite of its name, Bacon cipher, it's not a cipher, it's a steganographic method. We structured this video into three main parts. In the first main part, we will discuss who Sir Francis Bacon was. Then we will see what the Bacon cipher is. And finally, of course, we will do it in Crypt 2. We will encrypt and decrypt using the Bacon cipher component, which is implemented in Crypt 2. Sir Francis Bacon, the first Viscount St. Alban, lived from January 1561 to April 1626. And he was an English philosopher and statesman. In 1573, he enters Trinity College, Cambridge, and studies sciences. In 1584, he took a seat in Parliament for Malcolm in Dorset, and in 1586 for Taunton, in 1588 for Liverpool, in 1593 for Middlesex, in 1597 for Ipswich, and in 1614 for Cambridge University. So he was a long period of time in Parliament. And in the Parliament of 1586, and that was interesting for me, he openly urged execution for the Catholic Mary, Queen of Scots. And we will probably have a look in one of the later videos also on Mary, Queen of Scots, since she wrote a famous encrypted message that led to her execution. Francis Bacon was also Attorney General of England and Wales from 1613 to 1617. And he was Lord High Chancellor of England from 1617 to 1621. And he served for a queen and a king. First he served for Elizabeth I of England in the Queen's Council, and then for James VI and I after that. And Bacon's public career ended in disgrace in 1621. And on the right side, you can see a picture of Sir Francis Bacon, Lord Keeper and afterwards Lord Chancellor of England, 1617. I took this picture from the Wikipedia. Francis Bacon has been called the creator of empiricism. His works established and popularized inductive methodologies for science inquiry, often called the Baconian method or simply the scientific method. Therefore, Francis Bacon is considered one of the fathers of modern science. And Wikipedia lists 59 works prior to 1625 and 29 works posthumous. And for us, there is especially one interesting work. And that is the work of the advancement of and proficiency of learning or the partitions of science, nine books, which was written by Bacon and this version here was translated by Gilbert Wetz in 1640. And for us, interesting are the pages from 257 to 271, since here is a description of the actual Bacon cipher. And you can find an online version of the book, which I will also link below this video when you follow this URL here. Now let's have a look at the Bacon cipher. And to encrypt, or not even to encrypt, to hide messages using this cipher, or let's call it method, we have two steps. And this is the first step here. And the Bacon cipher, also referred to as Bacon cipher, is a steganographic method. But as I already said, it is still named cipher. And to encrypt or to hide a message, each plaintext letter is encoded by a code word consisting of A's and B's. For example, we want to encrypt or encode the hello world example here. First of all, you take the first letter here and then you look into Bacon's table here for the letter H. And then you see the code word A-A-B-B-B. So you write A-A-B-B-B for the first letter. For the E, you do the same. You search for the E, then we have A-A-B-A-A, -A -A -A, and you have here for the E, A-A-B-A-A. -A -A -A. And you follow this procedure until you have encoded all the words and letters you want to hide. And in the next step, 
the obtained AB pattern here is hidden using a biliteral alphabet. How does this work? Here we have the procedure of hiding such a message. And Bacon himself prepared a biliteral alphabet for handwritten capital and small letters that we will see on the later slide, with each having two alternative forms, one to be used as A's and the others as B's. As an example here, we created a biliteral alphabet that we distinguish using bold and non-bold letters. Let's see how this works. We have our carrier media. This is a sentence here. This is an unsuspicious text in which we hide our secret message. You write this letter down or this text down like here, and then you write your AB pattern yeah, above these. And then you can just mark, for instance, here, every A occurrence with non-bold letters and every B occurrence with bold letters. And then, of course, you <laughs> delete the upper part, and then you have only this text left. And this is a text that you then send via letter, for instance. And to decipher or to reveal the original message, of course, you do the reverse step. You write this AB pattern above your text based on bold and non-bold letters. And then you use the table that I've shown you previously to decode the message. And any method of writing the message that allows two distinct representations, so like the A and Bs, for each character can be used for the Bacon cipher. Let's have a look how Bacon did it. And here is a screenshot of the book that you can find following the previously shown link. And the book is the Of the Advancement and Proficiency of Learning or the Partitions of Science 9 books from Francis Bacon. And here on page 267, you can see the mapping from A's and B's to the biliteral alphabet. So for instance, you have an A here and a B here in your encoding. And then in your carrier text, you have two different ways for writing an uppercase A. Then you have two different ways for writing a lowercase A. To be honest, I don't see a huge difference. Maybe here you have a dot, I don't know. But for instance, with the B again, you see that the appearance of the Bs are different. So Bacon used two different types of writing or handwriting these letters, and he could hide messages inside other messages doing so. Now that we know how the Bacon cipher actually works, let's encrypt and decrypt or <laughs> hide using the Bacon cipher component of Cryptool 2. I'm here now in Cryptool 2 in the start center. This is the current nightly build. And let's encrypt and decrypt or hide using the Bacon cipher. And to do so, you search for Bacon cipher here in the template section. And you can see that this is a Bacon cipher based on this icon here with this A and B. Just double click the template. And then you have this nice template here. I think I am in the way of the template, so I remove it here and we will just move everything to the right. So what do we have here? We have at first here the plain text, this should be plain text. Then we have the cipher text here. We have the bacon cipher and this should be cipher, bacon cipher. There's a few typos. I think I will correct these after the video. Then we have decrypted plain text. We have ciphertext alphabet and alphabet. So actually this here should be probably more or less the key. So how does this work? You can write your message here using lowercase letters. This is a test of the Bacon cipher. This plain text then goes into the first Bacon cipher component here. And you can choose between encryption and decryption, and you can choose different output modes, but I will st uh, stick to the original Bacon cipher. When you press play here, the text goes into the Bacon cipher component, is then encrypted using the Bacon cipher, and here it's decrypted using the Bacon cipher. And as you can see, we have our original plain text here. But this version here now differs a little from the original Bacon cipher. Or actually, this is only the first step of the Bacon cipher. After 
encryption or encoding, you have to hide this here in the carrier media, at least when you use the original Bacon cipher. You can see here in our T input, we have two sections. We have this A, C, D, E on the left side and the B, Z, T, H on the right side. This actually here is the A part and the B part. What does this mean? Internally, the Bacon cipher component also uses the same lookup table that Bacon used, or it creates a similar table. And instead of only using A's and B's, this component is able to use different letters for A or the A side and different letters for the B side. When you want to have the original Bacon cipher, you just change this to uppercase A and then lower uh, uppercase B. Then you press play and then you have the original Bacon cipher. If you prefer lowercase, this also works. You can just change this to lowercase. And now here we have our encryption or our encoding using the Bacon cipher. And when you search on the internet for Bacon cipher implementations, these probably will give you this output here. And the nice thing with this component is that you can add additional letters and symbols. Let's add one, two here and three, four here. Press play again. And now the Bacon cipher component uses for A this um, letters and for B this letters. In my opinion, based on this extension, this is a real cipher. The key here, or the distinguish uh, to distinguish between A and B side here, this is difficult. And when you use a lot of letters, let's use half the alphabet on the one side and the other half on the other side. I don't know if this is exactly the half, but now it creates a ciphertext consisting of both parts of the alphabet. And it's very hard to distinguish between the A encoding and B encoding from the original Bacon cipher when you don't have this alphabet here. And now think of, you can even change um, the occurrences of letters in each part so that you don't have the half alphabet on the left and the half alphabet on the right side. It gets more and more complex and complicated. So based on the Bacon cipher component, we created a more or less strong cipher. And when you even remove the spaces here from our uh, plain text, it looks like <laughs> as if we have used here a polyalphabetic cipher. And I think when we analyze this, then our analysis methods will also tell us this could be polyalphabetic. But <laughs> it's just an encoding with a biliteral alphabet. But I think it's very difficult to solve. Yeah, and this is a Bacon cipher component in Crypto 2. But now you say, okay, we didn't do any steganography. And yeah, that's right. This Bacon cipher component is only for the encoding. But if you want to create a steganographic text, then you can have a look in the start center for steganography. And I think I already created a video about this. So if you're interested in that or in more details on that, please have a look at this video. But here you can see we have text steganography, a lot of components for that. And here we have text steganography with capital letters. And this more or less does what the Bacon cipher does. When you press play here, it hides our text here, of course, we mark it that you can see it here in the carrier text using uppercase letters. Of course, it now hides our message here like secret message by um, selecting uppercase letters or, or marking uppercase letters. But when you change the text steganography um, component from capital letters text to, uh, where is it? Making letters, marking letters text, was it that? no, capital letters binary, that's what I mean, then it works like the Bacon cipher. You have this A and B um, parts of your, of your code that is based or that we base our message here on, and it uses uppercase letters and lowercase letters to hide the message. So even if someone sees here, here is something, he still needs to know how to decode these messages here. Yeah, and this is everything that I wanted to show you in this video. I first introduced you to Francis Bacon, then I described how the Bacon cipher works, 
Then we had a look at the Bacon Cipher implementation in Crypto2 and then we had a look at the text steganography component in Crypto2 which can be actually used like the Bacon or as the Bacon Cipher. Yeah, and as I said, this is everything I wanted to show you. If you did not yet subscribe to this channel, please do so. This really helps us to grow the channel and to make the channel and Crypto2 more popular. Also hit the bell icon to be notified when I upload new videos. And I would be also really happy if you give a thumbs up for the video if you liked it. So thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video.